This is something I, I can't quote exactly what he said, but the gist of it is that I guess there are some teachers who say, okay, everything, happiness, unhappiness, all arises in awareness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But what Rupert's saying is that subtly there's a me in there. Mm -hmm. Because who could be happy or unhappy except for me? Mm -hmm. So what that brought up for the question that came for me was, what about attachment? You know, um, attachment happens in experience. Attachment to people, dogs, things. And so my question was, is it possible to be, I mean, attachment just seems to be part of the human experience. Mm -hmm. I feel attached. Mm -hmm. So is attachment possible without me? Mm -hmm. In other words, do you have to, mm -hmm. um, you know, somebody comes and ruins my car or something, you know, I'm not going to be happy about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or do I just go into some sort of uh, super spiritual state and say, oh, well, that's just going to be going. Yeah. That sounds like a bypass to me. Yeah. Yeah. And so there has to be, um, there is attachment as a part of experience, mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. the human experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yet, is it necessarily attached to the me? And if it isn't, then do we go into some sort of, um, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. super spiritual state? Or yeah. do we say, oh, there's an attachment here, but nobody's attached. Mm -hmm. well, I, you know no. what I mean? It's right. confusing. Yes, yes, yes. But, you, you know, um, let's say that there is uh, a happy attachment and an unhappy attachment. Yeah? So, I'm attached, you know, to my pet. You know, I love my pet and come home and caress my pet or or I'm attached to my mother or friends at work, whatever, you know. And so it's, it's always, it's lovely to see them and it's lovely to, uh, to think of them and to recall the wonderful dinner we had with them last week. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, all, it's very sweet. Uh, but if they decide to move to California, yeah, uh, <laughs> 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 uh, or, uh, you know, to the Bahamas, uh, so there is going to be, you know, some some sorrow, you know, some sweet sorrow, you know, some sort of a grief, but, you know, sweet sorrow, sweet, you know, remembrance of them, oh, gee, I wish they were there, you know, they were closer, I could see them, but, you know, I'll do my best to visit them whenever I can, and uh, maybe they'll, I'll invite them to come and visit me here, but it's still happy, you see, it's, it's all, even, even missing them, sort of thoughts of them and wishing you could see them, is happy. Right? Now, there is a different form of attachment where if I let go of that, I'll be diminished. Or if, I'll, if I lose that, and then I might not be as happy, I might not be as popular, I might not be as loved, I might not be, you know, as secure. It's, there is an attachment that has a, that has an unhappiness in it, that has a, 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 a grasping to it, uh, where somehow something is being defended, something is being gained and lost. So, I mean, gaining something in the, in the relationship and and losing something if that is threatened, if for some reason this person leaves or whatever, or my car, you know. Of course, I mean, the example of your car, yes, you know, somebody accidentally or in intentionally, you know, uh, damages, your, damages your, your car, you're not going to be happy about it. And you, know, and you do what you can. I mean, you do what you can, meaning, Hopefully they have insurance, they'll pay for the repairs. If they don't, you do your best. I, d I don't know. You, can, you try to work out something with them, hopefully. If they're 
very very stubborn and you know they really want to harm you know your car uh, you might have to look at some legal options uh, but so yeah in terms of attachment there is there is in in, in from consciousness point of view there is nothing that is separate see everything is is connected it's actually it's not even that there, there are no th no things it's it's it's, a, it's an, one ocean you see you could say well in the ocean there are 55 zillion 682 billion 567 million 895.8 drops of water <laughs> you could say that but it's really not like that it's the ocean it's it's one ocean so the, the interconnection of a phenomenal realm meaning at the perceptual realm you know whether it's the gross perceptual realm or or, or the subtle perceptual realm it's all interconnected you know a, a thought affects the vibration of of galaxies a thought and and how galaxies are dancing and you know and, and the supernovas are they're connected they're connected everything is interconnected the the, the subtle the gross realm is 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 it's, it's completely is it's, it's one it's one reality um, so attachment you can look at attachment as being in the field it's it's a it's a more energized it, it's it's an it's part of that same field it's one field and this one area of the field has, you know, a, a higher rotational field and a stronger magnetic field. Just like uh, the weather, when you look at the weather, for example, when there is thunder or there is lightning, it's not the whole sky that is full of lightning. There's lightning here, sometimes lightning there. there are areas where the energy is sort of manifesting itself differently so in that way in attachment because you're not attached to everything there are varying various degrees of attachment you know like there might be some really beautiful uh, maybe silverware from your from your mother or from your, your 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 family that you you feel more attached to than for example uh, you know some bed sheets or whatever you know or or uh, so so it varies you see and uh, it's just it's just when you're looking at a screen you know like you look at this perception it's not a homogeneous perception there are like is a red color there is a black color there's a gray you know it, there is there there are variations in the field so attachment at the at the feeling level at the at the emotional level is that way they're like they're um, they're fields of energy fields of feeling energy that are expressing themselves see if you scan your body you will find that that within the field that we refer to as the body there are also various fields of energy there are places, for example, at the, the tip of your fingers that uh, express m much differently, maybe with much less, uh, much less uh, of an expression uh, than, uh, for example, your chest or your belly. At the, the energetic expression at the body level. So at the mind level, in the in the, at the in the feeling state, it's the same way. That there is, there are. Sometimes you meet somebody and you just fall in love with them. 
you recognize something in them that's just really beautiful, resonates for you. You see? You might not feel the same way with other people in the room. Right? But all of that is, is imbued with beauty. Because it's, it's, there isn't, it hasn't reached the contracted, the contracted uh, stage where the self has appropriated that impression, has appropriated, has made a me dialogue about it. That I will, I need to have that, or if I do not have that, dot, dot, dot. It's different from saying, oh, I'm really attached to, to my neighbor, I really love him. Because that's a recognition. A recognition has no intention in it. It's, it's, it's pure. It recognizes. It recognizes the love. It recognizes the, the bond. You see? And if they leave, if your neighbor leaves, you know, that love is still there. It's still, you know, it's still there. It's shared. You see? You'll find a lot of enjoyment in organizing uh, various occasions to get together, you know, and uh, you might even end up seeing your neighbor much more, <laughs> the neighbor that you love, that you're attached to, much more after they left than, <laughs> than when they... <laughs> Sometimes it's like that. But... Uh, what you said, what you, you started with your question about that consciousness is uh, sort of open to both the, the happiness and the unhappiness equally. You see, Unhappiness is always at the mind level. It's never at the consciousness level. It's uh, unhappiness refers to a me thought, to an I thought. There is always an I thought in there, in the unhappiness. And memories and hopes and regrets and but at the consciousness level, there isn't unhappiness. So when somebody says that, that yeah, consciousness, um, you know, is both happy, you know, it's open, whatever the expression that basically includes both happiness and unhappiness, it's a little bit theoretical. So well, maybe what they're saying from a theoretical understanding is that consciousness is total peace and, and therefore it, it sort of it's all inclusive and if I'm suffering consciousness is there you know it's not resist it's not saying no I'm not suffering or it's not ruling out suffering. This that's true f theoretically from from an intellectual understanding uh, but from the experience of consciousness that's that's not that does not apply so in a way uh, the experience of consciousness is the end of the uh, me impression, of the separate me impression, of the separate self impression, which is, which is where unhappiness resides. And what's happening to me? I'm gonna die. I'm getting old. I'm getting weight. I'm whatever, you know, the whole me conversation. How come they're looking at me this way? Oh, she didn't smile at me. I smiled at her. She didn't smile back. Am I lovable? Yeah. All that 
is at the me mind level. But from conscious point of view, the experience of consciousness is the end of that. So this is why the exploration is to is to explore is the me, is the separate self, is it real? Or is separation real? What evidence is there that separation is real? So you contemplate your experience. And as you contemplate your experience, you will find that there is no support whatsoever for anything being separate. There is no separation. Thought might say, you are there and I'm here. But your experience does not say that. Your experience says, I am. In a way, happiness and unhappiness are states of mind. No, happiness is not a state of mind. Well, I mean, uh, I uh, think there's a, a distinction between different kinds of... There's the pink bubble happiness, birthday oh, happiness, oh, oh, oh. and then there's the underlying... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's yeah. What I mean. Yes, 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 uh, right. When happiness, uh, happiness and, hap and unhappiness as I have this, I'm happy, I don't have this, I'm, I, I'm, I don't have it, I am unhappy. Yes, so, yeah, uh, happiness that, that depends on some world body-mind experience is, that's not real happiness because it's, it depends on, it, it depends on something. You see, so if that's something, if I don't stay enlightened, if I'm enlightened now, but I get less enlightened tomorrow, goodness, that's not that's not very happy. You see, <laughs> so uh, you see, uh, yeah. So in that sense, yes, happiness and and and, and, unha and happiness in that sense, but that's not the real uh, meaning of happiness. Uh, happiness refers to. Uh, it's not a temporary state. It's, a, it's not a state, actually. Happiness refers to uh, just being love, uh, being love across the board, not being love because uh, I won the lottery, not being love because I found a partner, not being love because. Uh, I am healthy, You're not being loved because uh, <laughs> I'm losing weight. No, it's it's causeless being loved. It's a recognition of the true nature. Yes, it's, it's right, uh, right. That's beyond, you know, these states of mind. Yes, beyond the mind, right? True nature is beyond the mind. The mind arises, as a way of speaking about it, what we refer to as the mind, body-mind experiences, arise in presence, in our true nature. So true nature, the term true nature refers to consciousness, awareness, presence, is, is borderless. It is, it's not uh, a personal experience. It's the reality, that's why I say true nature, it's the reality of consciousness. The rea it's the one reality. The, the re you can say the reality of the cosmos, but it's just, just reality. It's not the reality of anything, it is the reality of reality. You know. Waking up is not a personal moment. Yes, waking up is not a per it's waking up from the personal experience. Waking up is waking up from the personal experience. So, uh, sometimes some people have reached a certain understanding and even a certain uh, insight into the into the true nature, but they're still not uh, happy. They haven't yet uh, realized the full glory of the self. And so, in the absence of a good guidance, they uh, imagine that that's the ultimate state, and so they make such statements that that unhappiness is part of the show. It's not. 